Hey, it's Jamie from jamieedwards.com again. And today I wanna to talk to you about how if you're a software developer, you can stay in the zone or also known as flow state longer when you're developing software. If you've ever gotten into a situation where you've stayed up late at night writing code, or you've just been fully immersed and felt like, wow, I've gotten more out of this session of writing code than I ever have before in my career, you've probably experienced the flow state at one point or another. So today I wanna to talk about some practical tips you can use in situations you can prevent yourself from falling into that'll make sure that you stay in the state of mind where you'll be as immersed as possible and really just do your best work. So the first thing we should talk about is how do you know if you're actually in the flow state? Well, as I talked about in the intro, if you've ever stayed up late at night and had a hard time stopping yourself from programming, you've probably been in the flow state. If you've ever been interrupted because you were in the middle of doing work, maybe on the job or you're a remote worker and somebody interrupted you through a chat message or something else and you got irritated by it because you actually felt like it threw you off from what you were doing, you probably also have been in the flow state. So if you've experienced this before, you've probably experienced kind of the heightened sense of awareness that you can feel, the feeling that you could just keep going and never stop yourself. And I find this is really the state of mind that I often need to get myself into to really make the most creative decisions and be really in the right mindset to have possibly breakthroughs and problems that I've been trying to solve. You know, much of software development, as you know, is knowledge work. And even though a lot of companies try to look at it as just like a construction company or something like that, you know, if you've been doing this for five plus years, you know, it's definitely different type of work. Somebody can come in and be refreshed and in a great mindset. And when they start their work in that way of thinking, they can actually produce, you've heard of 10X programmers or possibly five to 10 times more code or solve more problems than someone who's just irritated or getting distracted or not well rested. So how can we prepare for the flow state? I wanna give you four tips here. The first one, and you've heard this probably in other videos across YouTube, and you've probably heard it in social media and other areas, and I wanna give you some practical tips today that are specific to software development, but some of these are general and I do need to cover them. But the first one is to really turn off notifications. When you use a computer to do software development or an iPad or whatever, there's usually some sort of system tray, you know, on Windows or on Linux, whatever OS X, whatever platform you're using, there's often little applications that will run that will put something in the system tray and it'll notify us or let us know when something of interest may have occurred. And though these are really great applications if you're just doing casual work and maybe you're browsing the internet, if you wanna prepare yourself to be able to enter and then stay in the flow state, you actually wanna turn these off. So I would recommend go into your system tray, you know, go into the settings of any of the little icons you see there turn off notifications if you have a setting for each of those apps. And in addition to that, this is gonna take some discipline, but it really has helped me go into your phone if you've got a smartphone, which pretty much everybody does these days, and go into the settings and turn off as many of the notifications as you can. Now, one other easy way to do this is just to put your phone in airplane mode. I do this very often when I need just uninterrupted segments of time where I can do software development without having something break me out of my flow. So the second thing you can do that I think will really help you stay in the zone or, or enter the flow state and be prepared for it is to make sure that your team is using acceptance criteria to describe what you're gonna build in the middle of whether you're doing scrum and you're doing sprints or you've had a task assigned to you and you're doing Kanban. Many companies I go into that are trying to do agile software development methods, they're decent at writing user stories, and I'll do a whole video on that in the future. There's a lot of other videos out there on user stories, but I think there's some things I've learned that maybe are a little bit counterintuitive that I can share that will help you. But companies, however, and teams that stop at the user story, they're really guaranteeing that in the middle of the sprint or the middle of the workday, you're gonna have to be interrupted to answer questions because there's just not enough clarity in a user story for somebody to do work interrupted. So I find acceptance criteria, and if you go out there and watch any of the multitude of videos on that, and I'll, I'll discuss that in a future video as well, 
it is a great format that you can use that basically says step by step exactly what the software needs to do with no ambiguity and it's going to really reduce the chance that in the middle of you doing your work you come to a situation where you realize i have to stop what i'm doing now and i have to reach out to a product manager or my team lead or somebody else to get an answer to my question and if you've done any research on flow state or just being in the zone or multitasking you probably know that most humans take at least about 20 minutes to get back to the level of focus that they were at before they were interrupted. So a lot of these tips today, they're just really ways for you to be as endurant as possible and focused and to not get interrupted. So the third thing you can do to help yourself prepare for the flow state and get ready to enter it and stay in it is to clear your mind of any troubles. If you've got things going on at home or maybe financial challenges or issues that you're dealing with a coworker that are really frustrating you, you really need to do whatever it takes to try to clear your mind of that. Some people meditate. You know, the biggest thing you can do probably is if you've got an issue with someone or something in your life, take some steps each day so you're starting to resolve that and it's not on your mind so strongly. But I've found when I've actually got really difficult things going on at home, it's kind of unrealistic for me to expect myself to be able to get into and stay in the flow state. So just when you're preparing to enter the zone, make sure you really are realistic with yourself if you've got a lot on your mind and i'll do a future video too about anxiety and some of the things i found in software development will help kind of calm overthinking and things like that but whatever you can do to really make sure you're able to focus completely on your work and not have a too many things going on in the back of your mind that make it hard for you to just stay focused. That's really going to keep you in the, the flow state once you enter it. So the fourth thing that I think is really valuable and will help you get ready and then be able to successfully stay in the flow state and in the zone is to really establish a time box with other people that they should expect that they shouldn't interrupt you. And this can be really difficult, especially if you're in crunch time, if you're or if you're on a team where maybe your team lead or your product manager or project manager has a lot of anxiety, I find uh, project managers or product managers or CEOs, for example, that are under a lot of their own pressure, they have a hard time separating their own pressure from you. And many times if they're just feeling upset and frustrated, they'll kind of not consciously, but they'll take it out on you by constantly talking to you and interrupting you and making sure you're doing the right thing. You really want to prevent this from happening because it's just going to tear you out of the flow state all the time. And even though you might think, well, I'm an employee, I don't really have the right to ask for this. I think if, if you educate whoever that person is on why the way that you want to help them and the way that they can feel less anxiety and learn to trust you more is by knowing that you're taking the steps to get yourself into the mindset so you create your best work. Having that level set conversation, I've just found it takes a little bit of courage, but most people are very receptive to it. It might take a few times, whether you're, again, doing Kanban or, or Scrum, of reminding that person and having to you know, not be a jerk about it, but be like, remember we had that conversation before? This is my period of time that I really am not supposed to be interrupted. And they make, make the excuse, okay, well, I, I didn't know that, but I just wanted to make sure you knew this one thing. You know, finding tools or, or using emails or things that people can use to communicate things that they want you to know, but that don't interrupt you with a notification is just crucial. So I would also, as part of this tip, make sure you kind of set the expectation with other people that you're saying, let's say from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., you know, don't interrupt me make sure you let them know it is okay to interrupt you for emergencies because I think that's usually the biggest resistance I have to this. And you'll have to decide yourself, you know, in your unique situation, what the best definition of emergency is. You might give that person some examples, but that'll help, I think, take a little bit of the anxiety off that person from trying even this experiment if they're the type of person that's used to interrupting you all the time. And the second kind of sub bullet of this fourth tip that I'd like to give you. And this is one that can be very difficult for modern software developers, or if you're in DevOps, you know, doing that kind of work, doing operations type of work, is to find a way to turn off or not get notified as often somehow on these chat platforms like Slack, 
HipChat, and Microsoft Teams. Especially with the amount of increased remote workers in the world today that are doing technical type of work, these tools are great for giving people instant access to each other. But you got to keep in mind that that instant access comes at a cost. It will break you out of your flow, take you out of focus, and cause you to have to do work to realign. So if you have the type of position in your job where it's just inevitable, maybe you're responsible for the production environment, and if something goes wrong, you need to know about it and take action on it right away that's a position that maybe you won't be able to get into the flow state as much and that's okay you need to just sort of accept that about your job but if you're a software developer or a programmer or somebody who's supposed to be creating deliverables you need to find a way to avoid people just asking you questions constantly throughout the day because it's going to drive you nuts and it's better to have again that time box because then you can actually schedule time with people okay when i'm outside of my time that i do the flow state work that's the best time to meet with me to have questions answered or have discussions about design and things like that and it'll really just make sure that you get your best work done and you don't waste a lot of time and a lot of the company's time getting pulled in different directions so how can we actually stay in the flow state let's say we've prepared ourselves we've set good expectations we've cleared our mind all the other tips i just gave you and now we want to make sure once we're in the flow state that we don't break out of it early well the first thing that i can recommend is to use a standing station the first probably decade of my career i just sat in an ergonomic chair and i would shift and you know be uncomfortable and kind of try to change where my legs were and, and get up and my back would hurt and it was really uncomfortable and the longer you do programming or software development you'll realize how important this is but you know again the first decade of my career I didn't really have as many physical problems from this so I didn't really think it mattered and I actually remember when I was working at my first job right out of college I used to sit in my chair like low rider style you know leaned way back and I had this woman who came around one day at that company and she was an ergonomics expert and the company had hired her to actually come in and kind of look at how people's ergonomics were and I remember she walked by me and she was like yeah you're gonna have problems and I'm like why and she starts telling me you know about my tailbone and all these issues and I just kind of ignored her I was like 20 at that time and I, I was like you know nothing could hurt me right but so if you can use a standing station the great thing about it now I'm going to do a future video on preparing your body for a standing station so you can really stick with it because I think a lot of people try it and then stop using it because they don't follow a good regimen but if you can actually get your body used to using a standing station you're going to be able to be in more of like the natural state that humans were designed to be which is standing and that's just going to keep you more comfortable and you're going to be able to stay in the zone longer so the second thing you can do that will help you stay in the zone once you're there and in the flow state and this is really more particular to if you're coding at nighttime is to use blue light reduction applications you've probably heard of some of this but when you look at your computer screen or an iPad or an iPhone there's different sources of light that are emitted out of it and blue light specifically is one of these that can actually keep you more awake and it also can keep you sort of at a heightened sense of awareness and as the Sun goes down and you're doing work at night you actually want to still be alert you want to be focused but you want your mind to start to mellow out a little bit especially if you're gonna get a good night's sleep which I want to talk a lot more about because I think one of the biggest things that can happen to you in your career that'll cause you to start being unhealthy about software development is becoming an insomniac and I've shared in one of my other videos how I struggled with that last year but so there's an application called flux you may have heard of just search for it it may be flux.io I'm not sure but that runs on Windows and that will actually automatically you can set it to when sunset is and start to reduce the blue light that'll help keep you in the zone so that your eyes don't get fatigued and you can stay focused if you have like a late shift type of job or maybe you just are working on your own project and you want to work on it late into the night because you're really productive so the third thing that I can recommend is to sustain yourself and make sure that you stay in the flow state to set a deadline for when to stop work if you want to be able to get into the flow state and stay in the flow state for a long period of time you need to make absolutely sure that you don't let yourself work too long and this is, might sound a little contradictive to the last point I just gave you 
if you're working 10, 12 hour days, you're just gonna burn out. I talked about that in one of my other videos, but you really need to make sure that you actually pick a set of work hours and it can move from day to day, but sort of a, a reasonable eight hour, I would recommend, or less period of time to do your work. And only expect yourself to stay in the flow state or to work up to that point and then set an alarm for yourself, whether it's on you know your watch or your phone or your computer. And at that point, it doesn't matter how far you are into the project or how close you are to getting a task done and you might be really excited, oh, I've only got an hour left and I'll be done with this and I'll feel so good. You're gonna feel better if you let yourself rest and you get in the habit of letting work go undone to give your body a chance to recover. And the fourth tip I can give you is one that you probably are already following, but I'll just throw it out there, which is to listen to either music or binaural beats while you're writing code. Binaural beats, you may have heard of these. These are sort of tones. You can go out and download them from YouTube and there's a lot of paid ones you can find out there. But basically, if you put on a set of headphones that have some good bass response, it will put an oscillating sort of tone that goes back and forth between your head. It's really strange the first couple times you do it. And it'll kind of, depending on the waves that you pick, you can find, you know, alpha wave and beta wave and delta wave, these different frequencies of the binaural beats. I've found sometimes when I'm under a lot of stress or I've a lot, got a lot going on in my personal life, putting on some music that's calming or that's energizing, depending on, you know, what works best for you or putting on binaural beats can really help you endure a long coding session and stay in the zone and not get broken out of it early. So what have you done to get into the flow state for software development and stay there? Leave me your comments below. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. You can click the little bell icon next to the link and it'll actually let you know on your phone or your device when there's a new video available. I'm also on four podcast platforms, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud, and you can like me on Facebook. So until next time, thanks.